Welcome to Training Module Program for Centrifuge, a project by Prolific 3D Tech for Reliance Industries Limited. This program will guide you to understand dismantling, maintenance, assembling and troubleshooting topics related to this machine. Remove the torque arm guard from the gear unit guard. Slacken the grub screw which secures the torque overload device to the gear unit shaft. Unfasten the 4M10 set screws securing the load cell support bracket to the base frame. Carefully withdraw the torque overload device complete with the torque arm and load cell support bracket assembly. Remove the gear unit guard from the base frame. Use the lifting eyes of the guard to lift it clear. Remove the gear unit from the rotating assembly by undoing the cap screws securing it to the gear unit flange, leaving the adapter flange attached to gear unit. After the gear unit has traveled approximately 6 mm, it should be free of the spigot and can be carefully withdrawn from the spline drive shaft and moved to a safe place. It is always advisable to remove the gear unit when removing the pressure casing assembly from the base frame. Remove the adapter flange. Remove the nuts securing the belt guard top to the belt guard bases. Remove the six set screws securing the guard top to the base frame and lift off the belt guard top using its lifting lugs. Slacken off the 4M24 set screws securing the motor mounting frame to the base frame slide rails. Remove the 4M16 bolts securing the feed pipe bracket cap to the feed pipe bracket, and remove the cap. Carefully withdraw the feed pipe fabrication from the rotating assembly. A jacking device may be required for the above procedure, that is a screw jack fitted between feed pipe bracket and feed pipe flange. The three assembly screws into the feed pipe mechanical seal. Slacken the 8M12 set screws and then unscrew the two drive pins as far as possible. Remove the 4M16 cap screws which hold the seal to the feed pipe bracket. Using the 2M16 jacking holes in the bracket, push the seal towards the machine until its spigot is clear of feed pipe bracket. Retighten the 8M12 set screws and remove the two jacking screws.
Remove 16 M16 set screws securing the casing seal rings to the casing dish tents, and jack the seal rings off. Rest them on the seal body, clear of the dish tents. Remove any fittings on the mechanical seal which may hinder this. Remove the four bolts securing the bearing housing caps to their bases. Using the eye bolt situated on top of the pedestal cap, lift off the cap together with the top half of the adapter flange. Ensure that the lifting slings are capable of lifting the combined weight of the casing, together with the rotating assembly. Attach a double-ended eye-wire rope type sling end, to the four special lifting bars in the pressure casing mounting feet assemblies. Fit the other end of each sling to a crane hook. Remove the bolts, dowels and ferrules, keep in safe place, which retain the pressure casing mounting feet to the casing's support brackets. The complete casing or rotating assembly is now ready for lifting off the base frame fabrication. Once the assembly is lifted clear and taken to the work area, it should be lowered down and rested on the discharge hopper mounting flanges. Place the casing on 1200 by 500 by 100 thick wooden planks. This is both to protect the flanges, and to aid in the removal of the rotating assembly from the pressure casing. The minimum work area required for working on the casing or rotating assembly is 4.5 meters long and 2.5 meters wide, with extensions in length for withdrawing the rotating assembly, from the pressure casing of 3.5 meters at the solid end, and 4 meters at the feet end. Remove the 8M16 cap screws and jack the feed pipe seal shaft complete with the mechanical seal, off the drive flange. Place the assembly in a clean working area. Remove 12M24 bolts securing the driven pulley to the drive flange. And carefully jack the pulley off the drive flange. Take care not to drop the pulley onto the feed pipe mechanical seal. Remove the previously detached seal rings off the bolt head shaft, by passing them over the case seal assemblies, the main bearings, and the gear unit drive flanges. Remove the rest of the 32M24 set screws. Securing the dish ends to the pressure casing shell at each end. Take the weight of the dish end using a crane, and the lifting eye on top of the dish end fabrication. Jack the dish ends off their locating spigots, and pass them over the casing seals and bearings. Lift the lifting beam assembly into position above the casing or rotating assembly. Using a single 3 and 1 quarter shackle, fit it to the single lifting lug for the lifting beam only. Support the beam with a crane whilst, fitting the lifting plates to each end of the rotating assembly, using the clamping plates washers and fasteners as shown. 
carefully withdraw the rotating assembly, out of the liquor end of the pressure casing. When the rotating assembly is as far out of the casing as is possible, carefully raise the crane until the wooden trestle provided, can be placed underneath the rotating assembly. Reposition the crane attachment to the single lifting lug for the beam assembly only. Enter the pressure casing through the solid end, and remove the 7M20 cap screws and nuts, securing the SE lifting plate to the gear unit flange. Remove the anti-rotation bar, and carefully remove the lifting beam assembly out of the pressure casing. Place the lifting beam down in a suitable area. Lift a complete seal assembly by using crane lifting mechanism, into bolt head shaft, remove the M12 bolts from M12 jacking holes, then insert distributor ring onto the bolt head shaft, and fit it with three cap head screws. To assist fitting of main bearing, warm it in an oil bath, to approximately 90 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius, now assemble cylindrical roller bearing onto bolt head shaft. Insert oil flinger ring onto the bolt head shaft. To assist fitting of drive flange, warm it in an oil bath to approximately 90 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius, then insert drive flange and fix it with M12 caps screw.